pleased tonight to have um, uh, Craig uh, this evening speak with us about uh, tuning HT antennas and uh, how to use tiger tails with your HT. So, without any further delay, I'm gonna turn this over to you. See. What I what I really wanted to do one Saturday morning, Lana was in training. I wasn't kidding about the weather. It was about 17 degrees out. It was really nasty. I had nothing else to do. Lana's in training. Me and the dogs. I said, you know, I've got my HT, and we keep talking about these tiger tails. And theoretically, know they're going to help a poor little HT at five watts do a better job. But how do we work on? How do we prove that? Um, and then there's also the one size does not fit all. You go, as I say on here, um, you go to any website, Google it, and you're going to find suggestions from 18 to whatever inches for a wire to connect to wherever. It's like it's got to be better. So I said, let me get some toys together. So I grabbed my antenna analyzer. I grabbed a couple spare antennas. I was really bored. I went out in the garage where it's warm, and I said, I need a way to hold these antennas. Um, okay, so I'm a gadget guy. I like to make stuff. I had some leftover two before. I had a little Kydex. I had some nylon, and I had a couple pigtails that fit antennas. So I put that together, and it holds my antennas in place. It holds them steady. Because you really can't test this if your antenna's flopping around everywhere. All right. Eliminate a variable. So, as I said on here, now that I can move this, I am. Um, here's what I use. This is what the actual original antenna, and that's the antenna that's on my little fancy jury rig rig there is. This is what it showed. That's SWR3. It's not horrible. It's really not horrible. It could be better though. Um, what I wanted to test was how the antenna works with nothing around it. And then I held it to my hip. And this is what it did when I put it to my hip. <laughs> I'm a big fat bag of salt water is what I am. <laughs> I attenuated this thing beyond belief. SWR is up above 10, which means basically I'm sucking energy out of the universe. <laughs> Nobody's gonna hear me. This it's like more. using FRS radios. So, wasn't impressed. Uh, my comment down here is, you would do better with two, ten, two tin cans and a string. So then I reached out and I grabbed this diamond antenna. It's not cheap, the thing runs about 20 bucks. And I put it on and I nearly broke into tears because it really wasn't all that much better. Matter of fact, it's worse. As you see, it's getting up here. This is 146 right here. So it starts getting to the right of 146. My SWR is going up, and that's where we use our HTs most of the time is up there. So it's getting worse. This is the tiger tail with that base antenna. So you see it's, it's iffy if it helps. There's the, um, the tiger tail at the hip. It's a little better. Here's this diamond antenna. The SWR is actually worse. I put the diamond on my hip. Wow, that's not bad. It's not a lot worse than it was in free space, as I'll call it. So I'm happy with that, or happier. Greg, can you take questions? I'll take questions, whatever you got. Uh, I can't quite read the left hand scale. What, what is 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I don't know. So it's five, less than 5 to 1? It's just under 5 to 1, and it's going downhill out there. And that's a key part to think about right here. It's going downhill out there. So what's, what's the frequency range? 144 to 148. 146 is right down the middle. Well, and I, I, I measured the diamond antenna. It was much better. That's what I came up with. Okay. <laughs> and I've done this about 50 times just playing mm -hmm. around with it. Um, Who can explain it? Maybe it didn't like where it was sitting at the house that day. Um, but now, I put a tiger tail on that diamond antenna, and there's what it did. That's not too shabby right there. That's telling me that I'm gonna pretty much optimize the power coming out of that radio. That's what it looks like holding it right here, like it's on your belt. Now we're really talking business, but as you see here, that's actually not too bad. 
Um, the difference between the two traces here, the second one, the brighter, the brighter color one, the thicker one, I actually cut about a sixteenth of an inch off the tiger tail. That's when I started tinkering and trying to tune my tiger tail to that antenna. Um, so there's at the hip, about two to one. Um, so I had some observations here. The base antenna, it will work if you hold it out here or, you know, tape it to a tree and stretch your microphone as far away as you can get. It might help with some. The tiger tail is going to help the base antenna a little bit. The diamond antenna is going to start helping. You put the tiger tail on the, on the diamond antenna, now we're really talking. Um, so my emphasis here on the tuned tiger tail, and part of this whole discussion was um, whenever you get online and you find the dimensions for how to make one of these, you're going to find a variation in numbers anywhere from maybe 18 and a half, 18 inches on up. I cut one at about 22 inches and my SWR dip was way over here somewhere. And my wife hates it when I do this because I don't clean up after myself. <laughs> so I just started snipping about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. So now I've got all these rat droppings all over my office. <laughs> and you walk through and they stick to your feet and the dogs track them around the rest of the house. So now we got rats, right? <laughs> but I, I sat there and I would snip, measure, snip, measure, snip, measure. Um, until I got it right where I wanted it. And there's been more than one or two times where I cut a little bit too much off. And that's where these come from. So, but I also brought this so that you can see, um, if you didn't know me already, I'm a perpetual tinkerer. I don't stop. Um, I'm afraid of the results if I stop. Or perhaps that's the, the consequences. The next thing I started looking at, and it's a, that's a relatively new one for me, is looking at different wire. I have 18 gauge bare copper antenna wire. I've got 26 gauge poly stealth. I've got 18 gauge poly stealth. I've got some electrical wire. Um, those aren't serialized and they're not coded or anything, so if they don't come back, I really only want the bare copper one back. That's my new one. Um, <laughs> you got a use for the rest of them, play, take them, please. Um, but this really only answered half the question. You know, I'm looking at an SWR meter or an SW, uh, antenna analyzer with SWR. And as we all know, even a dummy load has a one to one SWR, but you're not going to get anywhere on it. So, how do you work on it from there to prove it? So, thank you, MFJ. I think it was about $19. I got it within a couple days, and it's a field strength meter. So, what I did was Again, to remove the variables, I rubber banded it to one of the legs of this that fancy little stand I made, and I set the radio up, and I would key it and give a call sign, testing. So I, so I cut one new, and what you saw a couple slides ago was where I ended up as I made it a little bit longer. I brought my SWR dip back to the left. So a little more research. Um, thanks to Brendan over here. He loaned me his antenna analyzer because his goes up to 500 megahertz, so I could look at 70 centimeters. Here's an interesting one for you. Any antenna I put on it at 70 centimeters looked pretty darn good. I could I tried to take a couple pictures of his, SW, his antenna analyzer. I wasn't able to. On 70 centimeters, it didn't matter if it was the little rubber ducky, if it was a diamond antenna, didn't really change all that much. So then I'm thinking, huh, can I make it better with a tiger tail? I started with two wires. I did one wire, and I started longer than it needed to be, and I just started trimming. You realize at this point that sometimes I've got way too much time on my hands, right? <laughs> and I just started trimming. And I trimmed from 22 inches all the way up to the terminal lug. <laughs> A lip, like one little snip at a time. Never changed the SWR. I thought that was interesting, but then I thought about it. The length of that antenna, the length of this antenna, is way more than a full length 70 centimeter antenna. 
does it need the other half or is it all here? So do you need a one and a half wave antenna? Does that help? I don't know. Again, I'm not an engineer and there was no Holiday Inn Express involved. But what I really wanted to find out then, okay, does, really, does this all really matter? Um, we've heard the story from Mary Moon last year at the Marine Corps Marathon, had two Bofang UV5Rs, one with a tiger tail that Vienna Wireless Maiden provided, one without. She was on the radio without the tiger tail and she could not hit the repeater for the station she was assigned on the marathon course. Mary, pretty smart operator, reaches over, grabs the other radio, and spent the rest of the day on it because she could hit the repeater with that, with that radio. The only difference was a tiger tail. To me, that's proof enough right there. That's your proof in the pudding. But let's get this magnificent device from Starkville, Mississippi out and see how it works. I didn't take any pictures. So what I did was I rubber banded it to it with just the rubber ducky antenna. I keyed up the mic, did a proper announcement, call sign, testing, and I zeroed the, or I put the display right in the middle. I call that my zero. I put the tiger tail on it. Okay, I put the tiger tail on it. Yeah, it was a little better. I put the diamond antenna on it. Yeah, now we're talking, that's a little bit better. And I'm joking on the last part when I say that I put the tiger tail on it, I'm still trying to find the needle. That thing hit the peg so hard, I had to double check to make sure it still worked afterwards. Um, now, I will be honest, there was exactly zero documentation that came with this handy little device. I don't know what the deflection means. All I know is I, I centered it with one, and as I made each step, at my last step, I was hitting the peg really hard. That tells me that this is indicating that the visible or the detectable power out of that radio increased by more than half of the display. If somebody can educate me and tell me exactly what that means, I'd appreciate it. Um, this thing's kind of, if anybody needs to borrow that, please just let me know. Um, if it doesn't go to Japan with us, my wife will be happy. <laughs> it requires no batteries, and it, it's kind of a fun little thing to play with. Um, and if you need to use it just to do some more testing, that'll be good. Can I ask you a real quick question? I'm not familiar with the tiger tail. How do you put it on there? Well, you've got a couple different methods. This is my wife's HT, and because that screw on the back is grounded to the chassis, and I use the meter to check it to the base of the antenna, I put hers on like that. Mine uses... A ring, a ring terminal and it goes at the base of the antenna. Okay. So there are a couple of different ways. Depending upon the radio, um, the Bofangs is probably better or easiest to do off the belt clip. If you have a BNC connector, you need a bigger diameter ring terminal. There's so many variations, that's another thing. You got, you got to make it personal, you got to make it yours. Um, the total cost of making one of these things if you don't do it my way, it's probably about 20 cents. Um, the, the bare copper wire when floating around, if you've ever bought any of that, do we pass that, that wire is not cheap. Um, it costs about 20 cents a foot. Do we pass this around? Please, please feel free. I think it may have gone around. Um, so, <coughs> as I say, based on my firsthand experience in the field, using my own HT, seeing how a tiger tail helps it, uh, because I have played around where I'm doing Aries drills with and without. I've seen that it appears to work better. We've heard Mary's story about how it helped her. I've looked at how it changes the SWR, and I've looked at how it changes the, what I would call the apparent output of the HT, and everything indicates that if you've got an HT and you really want it to be reliable or more usable, spend the 20 cents. Most likely you spend a couple hundred bucks on the radio the 20 cents is worth it. Um, the aftermarket antennas with the 20 cents, even more bang for your buck. It's just not that much. That is really all I've got. Um, that little test rig that's going around, um, like I say, the funniest thing about that was I ended up having to use a nylon washer on, on, the, on one side because I couldn't get a good st solid contact with the ring terminal so I started using a nylon washer on it. Um, 
and the two before was an afterthought because it kept trying to tip off my desk. I kept <laughs> clamping it to the desk and it kept flipping off of it. The two before fixed it for me. Um, and I can't wait to get my two jumpers back because I need those. So if anybody would like to play with that test stand or take it and borrow it and use it for anything, feel free. Um, you know, it's scrap out of the garage. So does anybody have any questions about these tiger tails? No, I haven't. I had a question about something you said way back at the beginning. I'm always confused. I got to, now I got to remember that. Um, well, when you're talking about the rubber ducky, that I assume that came with the rip, with the rig, mm -hmm. versus the aftermarket diamond in your case, it looked to me like what your initial results said was that the diamond was no better than the rubber duck by itself. Did I get the, that right? The diamond by itself, from what I got, said that it actually was not quite as good as the base antenna by itself. Yasik has seen something different, and I'm, I'm going to go back and play with it some more because it could have just been some sort of an anomaly. Logically, it doesn't make sense, so I, I can't explain it. So I'm going to go back and play with it, and I will report back to the group. Um, but that was what I got on that cold, wintry day. Um, I, I'll admit, I was disappointed. I was really, I think I said on there, I ran it like a dozen times, made sure it was all connected right, everything was the same. It didn't want to cooperate. Okay.